Hello YouTube. Today I want to talk to you about something tricky. Um, I get this question a lot. Again, I get a lot of questions. <laughs> but this one comes up a lot. Uh, how can you teach children about sexuality? Because um, there's a lot of misunderstandings about this. That how can you teach a child about sex? It doesn't even know what it is. It doesn't need it yet. This information. There's a lot of misunderstandings about this. And I... I completely disagree. I think yes, at a young age, children are already sexual much younger than you think and if you had thought about it at all or remembered what it what your childhood was like you probably recognize this is true so all right i'm going to i'm going to assume that you know children or that you've been that you're a parent of a child or that you have at some point been a child. <laughs> I think those assumptions are totally fair. So what, what is happening here? As a child, you gradually become more sexual. Sexuality and all that comes with it, it it's a life energy. You have it from the moment you're born, probably from the moment you were conceived. Literally, with that life energy, with that sexual energy, you were conceived, it was there. Bam! <laughs> Boom! As we say. It, it was there. So, to ignore that is silly. And you know it. You know it, you have, if you're a parent, if you've been around small children, you know they like to run around naked, for example. You know that they sometimes play with themselves. You know that they look at other children and at some point start to figure out, hey, they have different parts than I do. And hey, mommy has different parts than I do. and. They look, it just looks all different and they, they have hair and I don't and it's, you know, they, they realize from a very early age things that have to do with sexuality. So, uh, there's so much about this that is completely wrong in my opinion. So what are we going to do about it? Because, you know, there's a lot of eh, ideas and theories and whatever. We need something that we can use. What can we do different? I think there is a lot. Uh, but to just start with something that is extremely important, I want to talk about consent. Consent is something you can teach a child from a very, very, very early age. And it's something that is relevant to them at a very, very early age. And it, yes, um, it, at that age it has very little to do with sexuality, but it is extremely relevant to them. And I will explain. <clears throat> so, at a young age, a child is often faced with situations where somebody is doing something to them that they don't like. <laughs> And um, if you've been through the terrible twos, or you know, uh, <laughs> three-year-olds, four-year-olds experiencing life and the tr all the troubles that comes with, you recognize this. They don't like putting clothes on. Uh, in general, they like at any opportune moment to take uh, everything off again. They don't particularly like being hugged all the time. Um, or, you know, especially at moments that they want to play. They don't like, generally, when somebody pats them on the head in the supermarket. 
Yet, these things are all things that happen to them. Now, some of those are more reasonable than others. And they're all things you can teach your child about. Now, I'm going to go into the consent part. The consent is therefore really, really extremely relevant to them uh, as it comes to I'm being touched and I don't want it. I don't want to be touched by that person or in this way. You can teach them that from a very early age, probably when they're two, they can already handle this idea that, uh, no, <laughs> I don't want to be touched like that. And that's okay. It's okay to teach them this very, very extremely simple rule you are the boss of your own body, to an extent. I'll explain that part later, but this to make it extremely simple and no need for anything complicated like, oh, that's a good part to touch and that's not a good part to touch. That's way too complicated. Two-year-olds can't handle that. Um, and uh, I, I, am, I wager that a lot of children at yeah, higher ages also find this extremely complicated. Also, it's teaching them that parts of their body aren't good and other parts are. No matter how much you want to wrap that into nice, pretty language, you're teaching them that. And that's not something I want to teach my child. That's not something I want other parents to teach their children. All you, all of you is good. All of you, everything about you is good. It's good enough. <clears throat> yes? So this, to make it extremely simple, you can just simply teach them you are the boss of your own body, not of everything else. You can decide what happens to your body. It's your body. You don't have to put up with stuff that you don't like. To an extent. Some things you have to put up with. Putting clothes on. Sometimes we put clothes on. Sometimes we keep our clothes on. Sometimes I'm going to ask you to put your clothes back on. For example. And you can explain to them why. And you, if you can't, then I suggest getting a better reason. That's beside the point at this, at this time. Um, another possible exception could be the doctor's office. Sometimes you have a rash or a, you know something is wrong with you. The doctor needs to look at it. Uh, the doctor might even need to do something invasive like uh, stitching. And it's gonna have to happen, even if you don't particularly like it. So there are definitely exceptions to this, but they're rare. This is simple enough for your child to learn that, okay, of course, like in any situation, there are extreme circumstances that, that are exceptions. And most of the time, mommy or daddy is going to be the one deciding, you know, this is where, you know, for your own good, you need to do something different. However, in most other circumstances, they get to decide in Almost every other circumstance, they get to decide what happens to their body. And that's simple enough that they can, that a two-year-old can understand this. A two-year-old can follow, hey, you can decide if you, if, if you want to hug or not. You can decide whether you want somebody to kiss you or not. Um, you can decide when you're done with that kiss. If you decided at first that you liked it and then not anymore. You can say, okay, that's enough. I am done now. This is enough. I stop. Yes? That's very simple. And simple is good. We like simple, especially when it comes to children. And you want to teach something like this from, the, from as early as possible. It has a couple of advantages, teaching them this. First of all, um, they get to check in with themselves. 
they get to become more aware of do I actually like this? Do I like this? I don't know if I like this. You can help them with that even. You can you know, look at their face and if they're going like <laughs> then maybe they don't like it. And you can make them aware of that. You can say, hey, your face is going like... <laughs> maybe you don't want to do this thing. Maybe you don't want your brother to kiss you. Maybe you don't like it when somebody is pinching your cheek really hard. And that's okay. You don't have to like it. You can say so and then it stops. That's one. They become more aware. You can help them become more aware. And they will, will in the process of learning this, um, this guideline, this rule, they will become more aware of what they like and they don't like. It's extremely useful. Most of my clients have trouble with this. This is an extremely useful skill for them to learn. What do I like? What don't I like? And to, to keep an eye on that while they're doing things with other people. The second advantage is that you... They, they learn to communicate about this. Not just become aware of it, but they learn to communicate. Oh, I really liked that. Can I have another hug? Oh, I really liked uh, sitting with you on the couch and you know, watching that together while sitting really close. I like that. I like to do more of that. Um, I liked it when you put your arm around me. I felt really safe. They will learn by you encouraging it and by you, you um, talking about this. They will learn to communicate about what they like and they don't like. So they become more aware of this and they learn to communicate about it. Two things most of my clients can't handle because nobody ever taught them. Most, most of our childhood has been, okay, you get to repress all that and just do whatever your parents say. So that you become less aware, you become less likely to communicate because what's the point? I don't like it. Well, suck it up. So you don't say it. You don't say that stuff. So most of our childhood has been, you know, completely ignore what you like and don't like, um, and, and definitely don't communicate about it. So of course, most of my clients, they, they have trouble with that. That's the, something so useful to learn. So those are two. And then there's a third bonus. <laughs> there's a bonus. They will come to trust you more because you will demonstrate over their entire lifetime that you have their back at any time because it's your rule. You're going to have to back it up. You will demonstrate over their entire life again and again and again that any time somebody touches them and they say no, and the other person, whether it's a child or a grown up or a stranger or a family member, doesn't matter. Anytime this happens, you have their back. You say, hey, my child said no, back off. Or I don't appreciate it when you touch my child's head to somebody in the supermarket or to a grandma when the child doesn't want to hug. Even when it's grandma's birthday that you say, it's her right. It's her right to decide what happens with her body. She doesn't have to give you a hug if she doesn't want to, and I'm not going to make her. That every time you back them up like that, they're gonna trust you more and rightfully so you're showing them with your doing with your behavior that it's okay to like what you like and don't like what you don't like 
and communicate this and be expected for that the other person is expected to listen. And if not, then you go to somebody bigger in charge and tell them so. You go to the teacher, you go to the parent, you say, hey, I didn't like this. And so by learning this from an extremely young age, they can have so much practice with this. So much practice. Because it's, uh, there's very, very many situations where somebody, some other child hits you over the head. Some, uh, you know, maybe your brother likes to pull your hair. Um, you know, silly stuff that, you know, I'm aware that does not necessarily have anything to do with sexuality. But the skill, the basic skill set here is to be able to recognize what you like, recognize what you don't like, and communicate about this. And be able to set boundaries and say, no, I don't want this. I don't like it when you hit me. Stop it. I'm going to go to mom and tell, tell mom about it. I don't like it when you hug me. Stop it. Or the opposite, I really like it when uh, you hold my hand when I'm afraid. Thank you. I really like it when you, uh, hold, you know, when you have your arm around me when uh, mommy's away because I really, I really appreciate that you're trying to help me. Thank you for doing that. You know, all these things that you might not talk about otherwise also suddenly get talked about because it goes both ways. So it has many, many, it has these, these three key elements are so important already in having a healthy sexual experience at a later life, later point in life. And I mean, that's the the biggest advantage here. And then of course, there's the side effect of that you don't have to teach them about stuff like and somebody touching them inappropriately. Because it doesn't matter if it's about pulling hair or getting smacked in the face or some person pinching you in the cheek or you know, supposedly enjoyable things. It doesn't matter which which of it it is because it's your life it's your body you get to decide regardless regardless of what it is who it is doesn't matter so you don't have to spend extra time teaching them about bad touch good touch blah that's that's silly you don't have to teach them that if you have this basic principle in place because the moment somebody touches them in a way that they don't like, they're going to communicate this because they have years of practice. And once, <clears throat> once they have an experience that they don't like and, and they know what to do about this, if the other person doesn't stop, they come to you or they come to some other person they trust. And that's exactly what you want in any situation like that. So without making them afraid, without making them suspicious of every single interaction with a stranger, or suspicious of everybody in their lives, which is even worse, you are solving this problem that they could potentially have at some point. Sure, somebody might touch them in a way they don't like. And by addressing it in this way, from really early on, they get a whole lot of practice at it before such a situation probably is even going to occur if it does. So before it gets to any kind of sexuality, sexual crossing of boundaries, they're going to have a lot of practice doing this in a, any kind of way, and in a non-sexual way, with a lot of people in their lives, 
with grown-ups, with uh, peers, with you know other other children. You're gonna have so much experience doing this in a non-sexual way that it's gonna be automatic for them. It's you don't have to teach them the difference between sexual touch and not sexual touch, because it's just the the same rules apply. The same principle applies in both cases. So there it doesn't it doesn't matter that there's this gray area and there's fine line between what's sexual and what's not sexual. It doesn't it's suddenly completely irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Because this same principle applies in any situation. And like I said, they have, by the time this becomes an issue, if it does, and in, in whatever way it does, they will have so much practice with it and so much experience of you helping them out with this and backing them up with this and making them more aware and making them more yeah, more aware of how they're feeling, more aware of how they're responding to people, more aware of how they interact and how you could say such a thing to a person, how you can communicate about this without being you know, nasty or mean about it. Just be kind and still communicate, hey, I don't want this. They can have so many situations where this happened that it's going to be almost automatic for them it's gonna be okay i don't like this i would like you to stop followed by if necessary coming to you about it or coming to some other person that they trust so you no longer have to be afraid of your child being sexual with somebody because you have this extremely important training in place <laughs> that is going to prepare them for anything. But that's not even the most important thing. For me, the most important part of this is that they just, these three things, they get to, they, they get to recognize more of what they like and don't like. They become more aware of what do I like? And that's so important. That's so important to finding out who you are inside, what you appreciate, what's unique about you. That's so important. That's important in all areas of life. Then they learn to communicate about this in an effective way, in a kind way, in a, a uh, in all sorts of ways <laughs> before they're even, you know, close to a teenager. They've already had so much experience talking about all this, all these things that they like and they don't like. That's going to be amazing for them. And then so much building of trust, so much building of, wow. My mom really cares about me. She really cares when I don't like something. And then it doesn't matter that every now and then this this rule is going to have to go out the window because you know maybe the the doctor really needs to put some stitches in. Because you have this bucket load of trust with them, the bucket load of every single time you back them up that somebody did something they didn't like and you like on it. So much of that, that the moment anything happens, they're going to come to you. They're going to come for you to you for advice. Yeah, I think it's amazing. I think it's, it's a, it's the best way I've found so far to address many issues with sexuality, many things that I see on a day-to-day -day basis with sexuality. And that is the most likely to help prevent things like serious problems like abuse without making your child 
fearful or paranoid or anything like that or sexually uptight or anything of that nature it'll help them be themselves and be sexually healthy and prevent all that from happening because everything happens out in the open there's they're gonna be super open with you or you know with anybody else that they trust maybe at some point they'll switch their trust to somebody else that's not important the important part is they learn all their lives there's some somebody there surely there's somebody here I can trust that I can talk to about this that is going to have my back and support me in saying no to this person whatever it is about whether it was your brother pulling your hair or some kid in school knocking you down on the playground or somebody putting um, <clears throat> putting a hand on your shoulder that you didn't like it, it doesn't matter how big or how small it is it matters that they get practice at it it matters that this is a th something that is going to be important for the rest of their life and you can teach them it and it helps them every step of the way there is no downside That's my tip. That is my take on uh, <clears throat> one of the most important things I teach about to children about sexuality. That, in my opinion, is one of the most important things they can learn at a really extremely young age. We will talk more about lots of different topics. And I will see you in one of those next videos. Bye.